I'm attorney Laura Anthony, founding partner of Legal and Compliance, a full service corporate securities and business transactions law firm. Today is the third segment in a multi-part securities law cast discussing OTC markets and in particular their specific quotation levels and listing criteria. In the last two segments, I spoke about OTCQX listing criteria for U.S. and international issuers. In this law cast, I will discuss the application process for both U.S. and international issuers including initial disclosure obligations and fees. All U.S. and international companies that are quoted on the OTCQX must submit an application and pay an application fee. The application consists of a contractual agreement with OTCQX for quotation, personal information for each executive officer, director, or 10% or greater beneficial owner of the securities, except companies that are already traded on a foreign exchange or moving from another recognized U.S. exchange do not need to provide that information. The application process must include a designation of a dad or pal and an application for same and an appointment form for that dad or pal. And I've talked about what a dad or pal was in previous segments. The application must also include a letter from the company's independent auditor affirming their role and qualifications. That's for U.S. issuers. And it also must include a digital company logo and the application fee. The application is subject to review and comment by OTC markets. OTC markets may require additional conditions or undertakings prior to admission. The application may be denied if, in the opinion of OTC markets, trading would likely impair the reputation or integrity of OTC markets group or be detrimental to the interests of investors. All applicants have an initial disclosure obligation, which disclosure must be posted on the OTC markets website within 90 days of submission of its application and has to be confirmed with a notice by the company data pal. The filing of the initial disclosure is a precondition to the acceptance of the application for quotation, so the sooner it's posted, the better. The initial disclosure documents include a copy of the SEC reports if the company is subject to the SEC reporting requirements, current information in accordance with the OTC markets disclosure guidelines, including financial statements, and for international companies that are, not, that are not subject to the SEC reporting requirements, all information required to be made public pursuant to Exchange Act Rule 12G3-2B for the preceding 24 months. And this information must be posted in English. A company must supplement and update any changes to their disclosure within 30 days of the acceptance of their application for, for quotation. International companies must also follow an application with a letter of introduction from their PAL, their designated uh, advisor. As usual, details determine diligence, so careful attention should be made to ensure that the initial disclosure meets all OTC requirements. The application fee includes a non-refundable initial fee of $5,000. In addition, companies must pay an annual non-refundable fee of $15,000. In the next securities law cast in this series, I will discuss ongoing listing requirements and removal or termination of listing on the OTCQX. I'm securities attorney Laura Anthony, founding partner of Legal and Compliance. Should you have questions about today's topic, please visit securitieslawblog.com and lawcast.com or contact me directly. Inquiries of a technical nature are always encouraged.